hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to cover full stack clone app and the clone app is the stack overflow so i hope uh, uh, you might have seen stack overflow how it works and here we are going to build the nice and clean prototype in our our tech stack for the stack overflow right so this is going to be the single video i changed my strategy uh, we are going to cover this in this lengthy video so we will start from the sketch and uh, we are planning to build it end to end the simple prototype which should be able to do the same set of features like you post a questions and then random users should be able to answer that questions add a comment do the upvote downvote all those things we are going to have in this uh, system so first of all i will just give you the highlights like uh, what all things we are planning to use here we can use firebase for authentication and authorization so this is firebase and our for ui app for ui app development we can just use simple react app or next.js that depends on what we want to use okay next.js 13 and for APIs, we are going to use Nest.js with, let's say, Prisma as an ORM. Okay. I have already discussed this Prisma ORM with the Nest.js, but now it's a good pair Nest.js with the Prisma ORM to talk about. And we will cover some of the services in this. Okay. It's not going to be the like multiple video sessions i am trying to cover it in very few sessions because these videos will be lengthy so here we are using firebase for authentication and uh, we are using we are going to write a simple services so how the architecture of this service looks like this particular stack looks like here is our react app okay and let's uh, make it as a blue so this is our react app React app will use this Firebase authentication. So you will just use Firebase auth provider, let's say the Firebase auth. With Google provider. So you should be able to log in with the Google and that is actually a feature which Firebase provides. And once you do the login, you get a session token, we can say. Right, some kind of auth token. Once you do the login. Now, the next thing we are going to do is, uh, once you do the login, we are going to access some of our APIs. Because we need to maintain the data. And I'm not trying to create some set of microservices and uh, complex, create a complex architecture. Here, it's going to be simple two-tier uh, uh, architecture for this full stack clone app so here it is the apis and apis are simple we are going to have a questions their answers by different users comments and maybe the the votes these will be the different different entities which you will return the data you will fetch the data from let's say the user user we are managing in the firebase so there won't be anything like user entity in the database we are managing user through the firebase and here we just need to have authentication and authorization it should be simple authentication that you are passing authorization header before accessing some of the questions and some of the answers and these may be like a public APIs also, like in the stake overflow, you don't need to log in uh, to see a set of questions and the answers. But when you submit an answer, you need to have a login, right? Let's say I saw some stack overflow question and I wanted to submit my answer, then I need to record it who actually submits the submitted the answer. For that, you need to have a session exist, session available. So for that, we will be using this auth token to send while creating the answers similarly while adding a comment to a particular answer then you can use uh, the same authorization header and we will expose comments api and then upvote and downvote so this is a uh, plain two-tier uh, application architecture because i don't want to make it complex 
make it simple and clean end to end running application we are going to build we are using firebase authentication and here also when you are accessing these apis for the protected apis we are going to again talk to the firebase for validating the authorization header which you are sending in the token so it's like a simplified architecture with a few tables but when we will end to end obviously it consumes lots of time we are we are going to do the live coding of this simple application here we are going to write a nest.js rest api using nest.js here it these all will be the rest apis rest apis right so rest apis we are going to build and expose through the nest.js and data will be inside our postgres postgres is a database and we are not using uh, different different microservices all these tables can be inside this one monolith this rest api which is exposing a questions api okay give me all the questions and then when you click on the questions question detail with all the submitted answers on the questions so there will be relationship one to many and questions can further uh, answers can further have comments so single answer can have upvote downvote and further comments so it will it is again one to many relationship one answer can have multiple comments and one question will have multiple answers so let's keep it simplified one to many and one to many is the only relationship we are using in uh, questions answer comments and votes of votes uh, entity so once we have these rest apis exposed our front end app which is a react app which is going to do uh, authentication using firebase and once your session exists you will be taken to the let's say the dashboard there you are going to fetch all the questions when you, when you click on to that questions we are going to fetch all the answers with the comments and upvote downvote so here we are going to use the nest.js with the prisma orm it's like same as the type orm but uh, i mean it has it ha has its own differences we are going to use prisma client to access to the database okay uh, it exposes some database apis so it's actually a new thing if we are using nextjs 13 and use prisma orm for getting and saving the data in the database then these two topics are really new and uh, those can make this full stack app uh, more impressive right it's it's a simplified version but we are going to explore lots of different uh, different uh, tools here because on the front end react app we are going to use a simple react router we are going to use redux our toolkit so we will be creating a slices to store our data okay and then we are going to do simple api integrations with uh, our apis okay so this is the nest.js this is a simple react app and on top of that all these things is going to be inside one pn monorepo we should not forget that we are use we know uh, how we are using nx nx console so we are going to use nx monorepo with pnpm workspace okay this is like a, a golden point if we are using these tools and then react app with the firebase provider we'll do the login we'll store the token inside a user session then whenever you are making api calls we will fetch the the user token from the session and we will send that token in the authorization header okay this is a very simple simplified architecture we are going to add lots of lots of things and we will see how we are architecting the whole application and we will keep building this one by one so let's first talk about our database and then we will move to uh, building our apis with baselining our uh, monorepo setup so these are a couple of tables we are going to use uh, the user table uh, we may not have it we just uh, i'm just i just put it to provide the reference to the other tables so we are using firebase so once you do the login you get the the token and using that token we would know that who is this user because token has your email profile so and your user id okay so here we are going to have questions answers and the comment table because my ui structure looks somewhat simple 
so what we are going to have on the ui if you see a simple stack overflow right we see some sort of questions there may be we, what we can do is uh, we can just list down all the the favorite tags of the user okay i selected tags like node.js react and nest.js so you will be able to see all the, the the latest questions on those tags and technologies now when you click on to this particular question there will be a detailed page let's say this is the detail page right which has a questions and then for a particular questions there may be a respective answers right those answers like okay for this particular questions these many people have answered and then what you can do either you can read them or you can start adding your own reply also so that would be like you are answering for that particular question so we'll add a new answer for you otherwise what happens most of the time is you don't add answer you, you are just either upvoting the answer or downvoting the answer or adding a new comment to the answer so here there will be another entity we have is a comment so you can add a comment on a particular answer and then uh, let's say i added some comment and then uh, you can keep adding those further comments the only thing you need is on which particular uh, answer you are adding a comment so here i have this uh, parent id also because this comment comment can be a whole lot of chain right one inside another inside another it can be a whole it can be a simple tree so if the parent id of the comment is null then all those comments you are adding to that particular answer but if parent id is not null that means you are adding a comment to a or existing comment which is already there so it's like self-referencing we are doing so sometimes what happens is you added a comment to this then some user added a comment on top of this then some other user commented added a comment on top of this so you are not adding a comment to the answer you are obviously you are adding a comment to the answer but you are adding the reply to the existing commit which somebody has already done right so this answers and the comments are uh, somewhat little tricky and here we need to take care either you are adding an answer to the root question or you are just adding a comment and just adding your reply just feedback or some comment okay so these are some of the entities we have the question question will contain okay what uh, what is the tag of the question is it a node.js architecture type or basic core fundamentals the technology comment and the user id who is adding that question right now you will just see all the questions and you will start adding the answer for any selected question because this is like a stack overflow where you can post your question and then wait for the answer submissions from any random user then user logged in user will see okay there is a, these are the questions and i wanted to answer you can answer a question only once you are doing once you are logged in so i will see the question i will read through it i will go through it and then i will start adding the response to the question so these are the answers and then after adding the the response after adding the answers you can also add a comment to an individual answer or some other user will see okay these are the answer of this question i can do is upvote downvote and i can reply comment or feedback comment okay this is not correct you need to correct this or that so that is the comment comment can be just added uh, under the answer directly or comment can be added as a reply to the existing comment done by any other user so this is a simple entity relationship diagram and the schema like these are the three four tables we are going to have to manage the questions and their answers okay so this is like uh, our table structure looks like and now we are going to build uh, the apis first so we can just use simple nest.js and we are going to baseline the monorepo so monorepo is nothing but okay we are going to use the pnpm workspace with the annex tooling annex is a monorepo tool and the pnpm is the workspace so uh, pnpm we can use uh, the package manager to create the workspace and bootstrap our react app and the nest js app initially then we will keep adding the packages and all in existing applications we are uh, talking to the postgres here also we are going to talk to the postgres i mean we can think of using the uh, mongodb and all but postgres is fine 
because here we are managing some kind of a relationship and these are the three uh, different tables so uh, in the monorepo we will add a react type script f with the with the basic styling support i mean we may or may not use tailwind that i need to see uh, what is my design and then we are going to add a nest.js application which can expose all the apis and the apis mostly will be okay give me all the questions and then uh, give me the answers of this particular question so i should be able to return all the answers of the questions or the list of all the questions and uh, what else what other table we have is the comments i can also fetch the comments if there are those comment exist for any particular answer id okay the user will be coming from the token so we will have a user id and the email of uh, the user so this was all about our database now we can focus more on uh, building apis and setting up our repository so what do we have in repository everything is empty so we are starting from ground zero so we i'm going to use a monorepo here first we will just to initialize our uh, package json and then i will add pnpm workspace.yml because we are going to use a pnpm workspace which enables the local linking of the dependencies and how our structure is going to be is uh, if i talk about here or maybe i can draw something here so this is our whole repository right and we are going to have two main repo one is a front end which is a react type script another is a nest.js app this is react type script and this is the pnpm workspace and we are going to add nx monorepo tooling okay so pnpm and nx and now what we can do we can create also some small small packages so here we are using this react app and uh, nest app for building the apis and this all is done through the pnpm monorepo right so we have these two different applications and then we can also create some packages and now these packages are simple TypeScript packages which we can add like if we are writing a different different microservices these packages can be a logger library for the nest.js or any reusable component library for react like uh, i will create a reusable component and those components we can imp import in the react typescript so logger config any other mod any other packages like database or we are going to use a firebase so it's like a firebase auth package it's like custom package we are building and then we will add that package dependency locally because this is what this pnpm provides so what we are doing is these uh, both the applications are inside apps these both the applications are inside apps you can call them as an applications and these are inside the packages okay you can have another folder also inside a workspaces so this is like a simple setup of pnpm workspace like you can also have a npm workspace pnpm or yarn workspace the advantage of having a workspace is like you you should you can be able to you should be able to interlink or add the dependency of these packages inside application without even publishing them so let's say a simple example you want to write a simple auth module that auth module is just like a simple no nest.js module which you want to use in multiple applications multiple services what you will do you create a simple package and that package can be added as a dependency locally inside your nest.js app you don't need to publish it to a npm remote or a git repository git remote repository what you need to do is you can interlink that by just adding a dependency version in the nest.js app it's just like a simple TypeScript package you will be building. So let's baseline our uh, services and our workspace. So what do we have is pnpm workspace yml. So I did pnpm init. We got simple package json. 
but if, if I talk about I'm already using these uh, dependencies in my all the packages so I will just replace this my package JSON it is using all commit lint uh, husky typescript jest all the root level dependencies which I need for my project and then I will just uh, create two more folders so we have apps and we have packages don't worry about the dependencies which I have added here you will understand it uh, I mean these are just like you can see prettier husky uh, eslint prettier uh, prettier eslint and then some uh, commit conventions which I uh, which I will be enforcing and then we will create a commit lint config inside our root folder and then prettier ignore git ignore eslint rc and eslint ignore right these are some of the root files we will be adding and then we will also be using docker right because we need to spin up the container for postgres so docker compose uh, we will be using just only one container for now because we are writing only one single nest.js service postgres stack overflow okay and same name we can put inside our docker compose override rest we can remove okay there is a volume mapping okay so we have only one docker container that is just to have the postgres uh, uh, database and here i will just call it as a overflow api it's like a stake overflow clone we are building overflow api testing package json and then we can also add a jest config jest config and then this is all about pnpm workspace now what i can do is this has all the required dependencies i need i can just do pnpm first of all i will initialize the git repository git init and then pnpm install it will install all the dependencies which I have added inside my package JSON that these are mostly dev dependencies because we haven't added any applications yet applications will be added inside apps all the packages will be added inside a packages folder and then I need to add the NX as a dependency which is already there you can see NX NX is a monorepo tool which require NX JSON because with the NX JSON, it knows like what all different tasks it needs to cache and all those things. And you can see it has generated pmpm lock YML. Currently, we don't have any applications or the packages. We will uh, add like Nest.js app and the React TypeScript app inside the apps and packages if you want to build some packages, which are some reusable uh, code we wanted to put. Okay, and our simple readme file we will add. So this is like a simple root level structure. Now what I will do is I will try to install the add the nest.js applications here. So open in the integrated terminal. I will just do what is the, the create react app. Similarly, we have a nest CLI, nest new nest new apis or you can say overflow apis so i'm going to use pnpm here for adding this uh, api service so i'm adding this inside apps okay and i can see my package json i'll just replace it with the scope okay and i can see that inside my pnpm console open workspace what happened nx console the ui for nx okay i need to select the workspace and i will select this workspace and i can see i have only one project right now which i can do build and all these basic commands i can just execute there right similarly we can also add a react typescript app So husky we already have so I will just delete it 
so let's see pnpm run prepare do we have that script npm run build so let's go to the root okay do we have the script okay husky installed so i mean it is just installing the git hooks so that whenever you do a commit because i have covered this baseline things in my all uh, full stack clone apps like how we are baselining a simple pnpm with nx monorepo nx is a monorepo tool and pnpm is giving us this workspace feature where we can create uh, these multiple folders and can interlink these packages interlink the dependencies without even publishing uh, any particular package to the remote so let's say here inside this apps packages i will just create like let's say firebase auth this is like package i'm creating now i will add the typescript code and all those things and when when i add the dependency of firebase auth in my service i don't need to publish it for it it will should be able to locally link the dependencies of firebase auth in my application similarly we can also add uh, api logger this is like a package api config api database these are like some of the packages which, which you can think of creating okay and this is my application similarly my other applications which i want to create is a simple the react typescript app right so how can we do that react typescript template create react app typescript template i think there is a one liner command which we can execute create react app type script template so i will go inside apps and i will say stack overflow ui stack overflow api and stack overflow ui so these are like two different uh, applications we are building so this should be created inside my apps it is adding this package JSON and adding all the things which uh, gets added by create react app so just like a typescript template so it will have a ts config build script and all whatever uh, the typescript apps we have seen so we are adding everything is a typescript nest JS also is a typescript framework on top of express there we will be writing the APIs about okay in the stack overflow you can raise a question you can submit answer you can add a reply you can do upvote downvote and for authentication we will be using firebase so firebase we are going to configure with the create react app so once you do the firebase you get a token at the front end which you store inside a redux state or maybe in the local storage and that token you will be sending to the APIs so API needs to know the mechanism to validate it and here this is inside a package.json i will add the scope and then we can just see the nx console there i can see both the applications why it is coming twice stack overflow ui and here we have all these commands build a start so this api I can start start dev this is a simple nest.js application and another is a react app you can see nest.js application is started and we have this react app where is this uh, it's also kind of started i think stack overflow ui so i will go to nx console maybe this is the one Now it is just running the simple build because it's a CLI app. Both are CLI application which we generated, and we have generated a stack a stack folding of the code, like the basic folder structure which we get when you do create React app folder uh, create React app and application name. Similarly, we were using Nest CLI to create a simple Nest JS application. Now it's all about extending these applications, adding whatever we need, right? We need a stack overflow front end components login use with the firebase and uh, simple routing and all these setup and we can also use redux 
tool kit to manage the state and for the backend APIs we are using nest.js typo rm postgres and for authentication because for our protected APIs we will be sending the firebase token we will be using firebase admin to validate the token and we need to initialize the firebase instance at the server side so that is our next task so that because we are building a simple full stack application in one shot so all the dependencies which we have added now what we need to do here is this API doesn't have much in this package and you see it doesn't have type ORM, NSGS, type ORM, Postgres and type ORM dependencies so we will add all the required dependencies here and then we will bootstrap this uh, particular application what we will do is we can add the additional packages like config, logger, database packages externally inside the packages right and these packages we can use as a dependency in my this nest.js service so my whole focus here in this api app is to write the api is not writing the additional packages of adding the logger configurations managing the database module using type ORM or any authentication using uh, this uh, firebase token which for that we will be using firebase admin so we will just focus on core business logic of writing the uh, rest apis and rest all dependencies we will learn i will explain you how to build a simple package and with the help of that you can also build any kind of package that you can link inside your main application so let's build our package we can build any like config logger or database package and then we will add that dependency inside our application so let's add all the other required dependencies for our nest.js application so this is our nest.js app right which has only the the core dependencies which gets added by the CLI app now we will add uh, all the other uh, required dependencies so we have a core common we will need a event emitter we will need uh, some dependencies related to swagger swagger terminus type ORM swagger for generating a swagger doc terminus for doing a health check type ORM is for nest yes, type ORM to deal with the database and uh, we need a postgres so i'm just looking for all the dependencies and keeps getting keeps adding them uh winston type ORM all these dependencies are required so we are adding them as a main dependencies and swagger ui express because we are using nest just swagger so we need a swagger ui express uh let me check what else helmet basic auth express debug these are like some i'm um, copying from my baseline app which i'm always using and then class validator because that will do the validation of the payload class validator and class transformer these are the two modules which we needed for uh, the data validations using validation pipes okay and then uh, we have a type rm postgres helmet for security express uh, is the framework swagger ui express to build uh, the swagger ui okay so i think we have all the required package and the dependencies now in the dev dependencies we have a cli semantics jest node okay let me see if anything we need to add we have typescript ts node typescript we can keep only at the root level if you want to create it as a separate uh, dependency file and just we can remove from here and we can create a simple just config just config app inside this our folder and inside test we can create a, a setup env var file because you can see in just config what we are saying is for just config uh, set of files are like how to bootstrap the process.env for the test environment set of file is inside root you get set up set up env wars and inside test we can see that i created this file which is just reading this env.test so now we need to create this env file env test files and all right so let's create env and env test in the root dot env what i have created uh, sorry for the typo 
dot env file and then we also need to create env test dot env dot test so here we will manage the test dependencies there we will manage the main dependencies and we are using dot env as a dependency so let's see do we have dot env cli and dot env already added if not then we will add it as a dependency so inside our package json okay it's not there so we will add it and now we can just go to our source main.ts because we need to load the dependencies from uh, from this uh, .env config right means from .env file whatever the variables we are putting we need to bootstrap put them inside a process.env so this line will do that this we do in almost every project require .env.config so whatever you are putting inside .env file will get added in a process.env so we will also have a database url that we need to add so here we are going to see what port we are using in the docker compose override so we are using 54364 overflow api because we are using postgres 5436 so this is our database because database we need because we are using nest js type orm so we will be adding the uh, typings and all so inside source we are going to have do we have okay we will create a f folder and the docs and inside app you can create a domain so there are multiple domain like let's say questions answers comments all these domains will be there because we we need uh, isolation so it's a question domain all the question related apis will be there question module question controller question service we are using nest.js right so question answer and comments comments will also have upvote downvote so this is our app and inside docs we are going to have a swagger config right simple swagger interface so this is my documents here i will put swagger config this is stack overflow apis and this is my simple swagger.ts now i need to build some packages which i was talking about so let's say i added i updated the package json so what i can do is i will go to the root and will do pnpm install that will install all the dependencies so i have express basic auth swagger ui express winston for the logging i also need to install debug so if you want to install a particular module then you can also go inside the folder and you can just install it so how can i do this uh, okay for now i'll just put the debug here in my package json i need debug also and let's see if any other with debug is already there so we are good so debug express class validator uuid package nest.js terminus typo rm swagger and these are some core packages so i think this is almost all the packages we need so this is already existing code we need a config and uh, what is talking about nest.js swagger is not there let's go to our package json so we have nest.js swagger already there maybe it's just like a dependency when you reload uh that won't be a build error okay now uh we are putting the just config and we can also have a just config e2e so for end to end test cases we need a just config end to end that will look for the e2e file e2e spec.ts file and this just config will look for the spec and test.ts file okay these are two separate files one is using for one is doing the end to end test and another is doing just a unit test in our package json uh, we can also add some scripts for typo rm and test okay let's see what all scripts we are using already so it's all about test we already have so i just need to add some script for typo rm typo rm we are using for migrations and database handling and as we are using typo rm i need to i mean you may create a migrations run the migrations create a new migrations and all you need orm config.ts in the root 
so rm config dot ts will tell you what is the path of your entities where the entities are kept where is the migrations so migrations are kept inside src i will just change this path name src database or src database migrations So this is the place where I will keep my old database migrations. So you can actually create, update. Let's say you want to update a table after creating. So, so what you will do is uh, either you can use this type ORM sync utility or you can just uh, create a migrations and run the migration, which will create uh, alter table columns. All those things can be done through the migrations. So ORM config.ts will tell the migrations, okay, from where to key read the entities, from where to read the migrations all those things entities will be inside source app domain inside domain all the files with having extension dot entity dot ts will be type orm entities src migration subscriber and all these things so we are good this is just a check for when you deploy to production uh, you need to have ssl enabled or local development and test ssl will be a false okay so we are good till now so what we have done is basic uh, configurations we added a build configuration is already there ts config build for end to end test cases you can create a ts config e2e so it is just extending the ts config and just uh, when you wanted to run the end to end test cases you need to build it and run it okay so we have orm config nest cli config is already there which is available and then we have env already set up the test environment setup is already there this is end-to-end -end test cases right just e2e -E, we can just remove it we have just end-to-end -end tests uh, file outside i mean in the root folder okay so we can just see our scripts npm run build npm run start npm run dev and inside source we have these domains database documents this is our app module now i will be creating uh, these two domain modules these three domains so there is a these are act like actually like sub modules and then on top of that they will be added to the domain module domain module i will be adding inside app module so this is how it works so let's take a pause here from this nest gs app and let's build some packages so packages we are going to build inside the packages folder and then we will link those packages and we will add as a dependency of these packages inside our nest gs app so let's build a simple package so let's say i want to build a simple package which talks about typings right so api types which we will be sharing between uh, UI and the APIs. So I will open the integrated terminal. I will have a simple package JSON created here. Uh, simply pnpm in it. I will add the required dependencies. Now what all dependencies we need? Because it's going to be a TypeScript package. We, we need all the dev dependencies and dependencies here. So this is our package JSON created. Now here we are going to add pnpm add all the dependencies like because here you will be writing the tests and the typescript logic and typescript logic is, logic is nothing but simple types you are going to create so here i will create a simple source folder and inside index.ts so it's just like okay you write some function here in the api types or export enum or class now i want to use those enums or the types you have defined here across my typescript package or across my nest.js app or react app or any other app so that's why i'm creating this uh, simple monorepo package this package can be used in anywhere in my front end app back end app or because i just need to add that as a dependency so before that i need to have a ts config because it's going to be a typescript package which we need to build also and then inside package json we need to have all the dependencies we need so what all dependencies we need uh, is uh, you can see we need uh, jest express node uuid i mean that depends that depends what you are doing currently if i'm not if i'm just creating simple enums and all i just need a typescript dependency here 
so i will just remove node some we can just keep node just uuid if you are generating a using this package there then you just keep the uuid so this is my types package right and when you build once you build it it will create this index.d.ts file which can be used by the other applications which are importing this package to understand the type definitions so let's say i'm just using export class hello right here i have simple constructor and some methods async say hi this is like a simple function you have done and i'm just doing promise dot resolve right when you build it so how can we build it uh, there is already a build script is there inside this tsc typescript compiler simple and you can also write the test cases using because we are already running the test so whatever you are writing test that will be tested here and we just need a just config inside this api types i will be using same just config everywhere this is extending the just config we have added, added at the root you can see and then it is just checking this collect coverage verbose i mean i just copied this from the template okay so this is my just config these are just like uh, how to gen generate a coverage just coverage right i will just clear it out and in my workspace if i look into this now i can see one package also i mean it's loading the old name but you can build it so it is just using simple typescript build command it has been built so you can see the build and you can see the index.d.ts and index.js now if you want to add this as a dependency what you will do is you will just import this in your nest.js app let's say i want to import it here inside this api uh, service so what i will do i will go here and i will import this dependency and i will say import this package star so now when you do pnpm install it will try to resolve this package obviously it's not in the remote then it will link or it will install this package from the local packages so if i do the build of my nest.js app okay then it will build this uh, package first because there is a one dependent package so it will build that first and then it will add it okay okay that is built that is already error inside this package sorry inside the service but we are able to add that as a dependency so inside node modules if you go okay i should be able to see the dependency gets added here okay for that i need to do pnvm install so what i will do is i will go to the root So what it will do is it will install it now it will check all the packages and if there is anything new it will install it so now if i go to the node modules of this service and you can see the dev types added now this has been added because i added that dependency and this is how in the pnpm workspace you should be able to link the dependencies locally without even publishing the package to the remote so now i can just use this particular class export class hello so you can import hello from how will you how will you use it inside somewhere in your let's say main.ts how can you import this import hello from dev types and what i can import hello this is the class provided from there hello right this is how you can import that class so this is how we are going to build the packages in the service so we can build the config package logger database package and then we can import those packages inside our api or our react app wherever we want to see the fit right so this is api types now what you can do is we can add our enums classes interfaces whatever the api types we are using which we can share with the front end like okay this is the questions payload questions should have an id uh, name description 
question text comment whatever the the because we build these database tables right and in these database tables we already know the question types question contains the tags technology comment user id so what all required optional you can add interface enums all the types and then you can put that inside these typings and you can use these typings across both the different apps like the front end app and the api app now we can add the api loggers all these are like uh, existing packages i can add api database which will enable the typo arm api config which is just enabling uh, a simple classes to populate the values configurations values from the process.env and just a simple winston logger is the api logger module but all these modules are using the same structure they have source index.ts they have their own package json and they are exporting a particular root module like logger module database module config module adopting the same structure now the difference is in these packages and you will see the nest.js core common dependencies because these all are nest.js modules nest.js config nest.js uh, type orm nest.js database module we are building on top of uh, those modules only so let's say if i talk about simple config module how it looks like and then you can just think about it that how we are going to build other packages so next is config package that is going to have a simple source config inside source i have index.ts i'm exporting everything from here and config module and it is going to have all these dependencies what kind of dependencies it is going to have a nest.js core common we don't need microservices testing if we are writing tests but at, at least these dependencies now you go to the root and do pnpm install so you will see the node modules gets created for this api config package and you can run the node modules like uh, here we need to do dev i mean these are like existing packages which i have built for other application i can i'm just reusing them and i'm just explaining this is how we are creating these workspace packages and then using those packages in our application so now if i go to console and do the build for config api type okay this is picking up the okay this is the dev config and here i can do the build so what this config is doing is con config is simple class this is the config module right it's just like i have created a simple config module on top of a simple library i mean nest yes uh, i i wrote the config service which is doing nothing but reading the configurations from the process.env and using this config module uh, like either you can use a nest.js config module which is provided by nest.js to read the data from the .env file that is just another way uh, i'm using it just uh, in another way i'm just using simple class which is having these getter setters and then like i can just do a this dot config service dot get dot env so indirectly it is again reading from the process dot env only but we got a pro proper structure okay there is a config service you can just do a dot get particular variable to get the value and that config service is reading from process.env which has been loaded by dot env module right so this is my api config package now if i want to use this package anywhere in my application what i will do is dev config right So I will add this package in my service. I will go to the package JSON and I can simply say dev config and import it. Okay, and at the root, go to the root of uh, this pnpm install. So what it will do it will add that as a dependency and you can see that popping up here config right so this is how the dependencies gets added okay so now uh, let's add our database package also and then start building the entities for our database so database package uh, okay this is nest.js api is inside packages 
we have api database right so what i'm going to do here is uh, we already have the dependencies and all the things already available what i'm going to do is because database it also requires the dependency of api config so i will go to the package json of the database so we will have a source config and package and just config this is my api database and i will update some of the dependencies because this database package will also be having a dependency of config so we are going to have a dependency of dev config logger we don't need so because here we are going to play with the type rm this is going to be using nest just type rm so that will be dev dependency because these both the dependencies are already added in the root package and we don't want them to be a part of the dependencies because here we are not using them okay either we can move them then we have to use the same package versions whatever we are using for the apis so we don't see any conflict here if you see uh okay json nest js type rm is 9.0.1 and then type rm is using is my the package 0.3.12 Okay, go to your package JSON. So I can move them to the original dependencies. Main dependencies. Common configs, we did they can be simply a dev dependencies. Okay. So this is our database package. Okay, and what it contains a simple database module which is dependent on the config module to get the database url and all those properties and i what i will do is i will do pnpm install so i get the node modules and all the dependencies initialized dev config okay what is the package name here dev config i will go to database and here inside package json okay the version was the issue i will do pnpm install again because there was only 1.0.0 and I was installing 1.0.3 so I got the config package in the database package added these packages can also be interlinked because configurations is what I need in the database database URL is coming from the configurations right so I'm using this config package inside database package you can see inside this module we are getting this config service and through this config service we are getting this database URL config.get.db and then this is our database module or database package which we can also build and see dev config dev database we can just build this so to see okay everything is perfect here or we can just fix if anything is wrong everything is good so this database package we can add in our apis I mean it's just like a simple additional package I have added otherwise what you have, could have done is simply type rm module dot for root async you can, I can show you next yes type rm how we initialize the database connections using type rm right and next yes has this type rm next yes package to have the database connections for for the postgres mysql or any database so this is what I'm doing inside a separate package and then importing this package in my api package so here this is my api package json and after this config i can add uh, my new dependency and at the root we can do pnpm install so this dependency will also get added or installed instead of linking through the manual command you just add it like this and do the pnpm install so this dependency will also get loaded here you can see config database and types now everything is here now go to the database go to the app domain and what i can do is i will start creating the entities dot entity dot ts right this is comment dot entity dot ts and then we will create the modules also 
this is question dot entity dot ts and then there can be a main module i mean the domain module these are like child modules so we can have one root domain module domain dot module dot ts right inside domain module you will be importing things to just uh, like let's say this is the domain so inside domain module you will be importing whatever is needed so how we define the domain domain dom module i will just uh, put a simple implementation so what we do is at the rate module and inside at the rate module we define the imports providers and all these things this is how we create a module in the nest js right controller if we have any root level controllers so providers controllers and then the class associated to this export class uh, domain module and then this domain module we can import inside our app module so this is app module i will import the domain module here domain module is es6 class i can import it here so now inside app module we are importing domain module and domain module so domain module has all the sub level modules question module answer module comment modules and inside app controller so i will just change the app controller with simple health check module so I'm, we are using this terminus right so i need to import this terminus module inside my api module also because we are using that inside some controller in the root level controller so terminus module we can import from nestjs terminus that will that is helping us to do a simple health check endpoint you can see these are the internal services and it is just checking the health of the type forum database connection so if it is healthy that means our apis are healthy domain module and then here i'm going to import uh, all our services controllers and the modules okay so what all the modules we are going to have all the sub level modules so inside imports you can specify all different modules you have so i'm going to have an event emitter module that is for sure dot for root event emitter module okay for root okay and event emitter module we need to import from nest yes event emitter and then all the other required modules we have like we are using db module a database module dot for root db module will come from the package right db module what happened is it not importing that so import and we are saying import this from we already have database package so it should be exporting yes this db module i was talking about and here we can call for root and it is taking all your entities as an input this is type script is so slow and inside entities you need to pass all the entity type script classes let's say here you are going to create answer dot question answer dot ts question dot ts and all so i will just use one template and then we will change these entities question entity answer entity and all right question entity so this is simple template i'm using so it is just showing questions question entity it's like a simple typescript class so uuid is a primary key so inside question entity what we are going to have if you look into this database question will have uh, the question label right question text technology comment we can just call it as a question text of type string length can be variable question tags 
technology in which you want to ask and then you have a user id which is of type uuid and can be null right because user may be posting anonymous as a question or user may be logged in and posting some question but we will just think okay user should be logged in if he is posting a question i copy this entity from one of my previous project so i will delete these uh, unnecessary variables which we have now what else we wanted to add tags technology comment user id so comment is also again a var care so this is my question table right question technology tags question text id uh, now the created at updated at and deleted at this is questions entity and we can import this questions entity in my domain module here we need to pass all the entities which we have in the application because it it, it is feed it to the typo rm to synchronize the database with these entities now i can just pass the config module also config module we are importing from dev config okay so everything is set other than that we are going to have answer module comment module and question module i just wanted to show just a simple bootstrap how we are bootstrapping it controllers and providers we haven't created any service or controllers till now so let's build this and see if it is working so we are going to build the apis build it and then we will start it so it is waiting for three dependent projects to build successfully and then it will uh, add the because we already added the dependency now it is doing the build next build and it failed because we are doing something wrong it should be dev config next just swagger and then i need to build this again this is like a simple swagger package i didn't focus much on baseline base, baselining the nest js app because if you are watching my channel then i'm already doing it everywhere right and here we are just not uh, we are doing baseline of simple api app which has a swagger which has a nest js type orm a config module a logger module a simple very simple setup that's why i didn't focus much on that so we are able to do the build and now i will be just starting the application Okay, next is swagger. Why it is complaining? Okay, next is swagger, and its corresponding types. So I can see next is swagger. Uh, swagger is already there, and inside types, do I need to worry about the types? I just need to check. Uh, so next is swagger we have. If it is not reflecting that, that may happen. So we can go to package JSON. So if I can see nest.js swagger, it's already a dependency added. So let's see what we are missing here in the swagger uh, dependency. Swagger UI express, nest.js swagger. I think we have both the packages, nest.js swagger and swagger ui express to resolve these things what i can do is i remove the node modules and try to see if uh, i can get this back again npm install and we do have the swagger uh, typings and everything available because d.ts files i see everywhere and i can just do the build again i mean in the build it's not creating any issue let's do start dev okay now it is resolved so that's really good thing now service account object must contain a string project property okay why okay firebase admin am i using firebase admin stuff anywhere looks like uh, i'm using it somewhere i didn't add the firebase admin stuff anywhere but let's see 
from the copied code if if it might have seed it till here in the database inside app we don't have it okay firebase admin let me just test uh, where it is creating this okay in the modules when we are starting this application src app module.ts are we referring it anywhere domain module terminus module inside domain module we have event module database module config module okay this firebase config yes we have but i am not initializing the firebase app anywhere credentials and any okay let me see are we trying to initialize because if you are in initializing then you need a uh, the firebase key and all so go to config service go to config package and here inside a source config service these are the credentials okay maybe it is trying to initialize the app and it is looking for the private key client id and all these things right so that is correct it is trying really trying to get this from the environment variables and we are using this config package right so what i can do is i can pass some of these environment variables right i mean it will not be able to initialize the firebase but let's see what happens if i'm just passing just a dummy values inside our env so uh, what i will do is inside applications i will just pass this as environment variable so i just need to pass these properties as an environment variable inside my api app env these things needs to be there as an environment right so if i do a start again so i will be using for from my existing application must contains the private key okay let's see if i'm passing some empty value i mean this private key is not valid but let's see what will happen either it will throw an error or we need to find a valid private key fail to pass the private key okay to get this started i will pass my original private key and then i will start the application i mean for now just forget about this that, that these are some of the environment variable i populated because yes we need them we need them because uh, at front end side we will be just using firebase client that will give us the login and firebase client will give us the token using firebase authentication and that token you will pass to the APIs and APIs need, needs to have these uh, variables to validate the token validate the Firebase token at the server side okay we are not able to connect to the database so what I will do is I will just do docker compose up and we have docker compose docker compose override it should be able to create this overflow API database And then I can do this start again. Check the environment first. We are using 5436 our flow API. So these are like basic troubleshooting uh, you have to do while uh, while writing the code. Now I think my application will start unable to connect to the database. Our flow API doesn't exist. Is it creating from an existing volume? That may be the problem. So I will just prune this container first. images let's keep it in the volumes unused volumes i will purge and then i will do docker compose up again this is stack overflow stack overflow it should be totally new data sv api data 5436 overflow api okay i got it i think we are missing one script which is creating database so i will just copy this docker utils 
we already have it okay it was empty so i will delete this what it contains i mean this docker will use this as a init script right and it will help us to create a database and in you can see in the environment we are already passing the username and password and then the multiple database names once you do the docker compose up it will actually use these environment variables to create the databases for us and you can see here it has created these databases so we are good this is actually entry point script which we are passing here and it is being added as inside a container and when you start the container this entry script gets executed automatically this is how the the docker container works if you override the init script it will execute that first while coming up while uh, spinning up so now we have our container running running with the database i can just do npm run start dev i have a database now and i have one simple entity also added you can see it has created this questions table right in the database because we are using type o rm sync true this property in the database module if you see the packages database source config here inside this i'm passing i'm passing synchronized true that means whenever there is entity change this is actually the same and what i'm using is type or module dot for root async and the same package i'm using in every nest.js project and these are the type uh, postgres connection options all the entities type script classes synchronized true logging true so it will just do log all the sql statements it is executing so this is our simple setup config database types gets added in the api api is running with the simple setup and this is how our simple entities so this is question entity now the next thing is questions will have a answers will have a relationship with the questions one to many one question will have multiple answers and one single answer can have multiple comments and comments will have a self relationship also self referencing if you look into our database this is what we need questions answers and comments these three tables we are going to construct through these entities without relationship we can already have them so user id will be a simple loose foreign key everywhere this answers table which will have a question id so this question entity i can copy this question entity inside answers entity and i will just say answers answers entity so here it will have a question id which is must of type uuid question id and then it has answer text which is var care default not null that also we need to make sure answers uh, question id uh, response comment upvote downvote user id upvote is type integer So how many numbers of upvote is there? Downvote, upvote, downvote, comment is fine. User ID is default null. There can be like who is submitting the answer. So user ID should not be null. That is good because we need to know the reference who is submitting the response answer. So user ID comment upvote downvote. This is answer text. This is the question ID to which you are adding the answer text. And you can also add additional comment. Okay, so this is our table, and this table also has been created. Now we have another third table, which is comment entity. So this is comment entity. extend base entity and now it will have like a comment text okay comment to which answer so because comment has nothing to do with the questions comment you are adding by while reading someone's answer right 
so it should have an answer id as a uuid because this is a relationship every uh, question every comment should have a reference okay to which question to which answer you are adding that comment and it will also have a link to your parent key because sometimes what happens is somebody on somebody added a, a reply to your answer then you also wanted to reply back right so it's like a chain of uh, the response which gets added so it's like a self join you will be adding as a parent id so if you are adding a new uh, new comment a parent id null that means you are adding a reply to the root answer so let's say somebody asked a question and you just added a answer and then maybe sometimes later you might add a comment if parent id null means you are adding all those comments to the answer only all those answers otherwise let's say somebody else also added an answer and now you wanted to reply to to that particular person in that case uh, we would need the parent id parent id is nothing but another id of this uh, the whole table record so answer id parent id and then uh, comment text that's it so this is just like another table we have comments comment entity answer id and these three entities has been created because type or i'm seeing when i'm doing entity change it is creating these tables now we will just uh, define the relationships so how the relationship works in the type orm it's like one to one one to many many to many right in these three relationships we will create and then we will take a look on to our database and we'll see if there is any uh, missing column we will add that through these uh, entities only so these entities we need to import in our domain module so question entity comment entity and then answers entity okay now uh, the next part here is defining the relationship between these entities 